Sun came out. Perfect timing. That's sarcasm. Overcast is much better for filming. I figured umbrella broken. Maybe banana trees would do the trick. Kind of. Sort of working. Provides a little bit of shade, at least for the face. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just hanging outside. It's a beautiful morning. Sitting over here with marmalade. Got my box cutters over here and a new package. Came in the mail from one of my favorites, if not my favorite place to order plants online, Plant Delights. This should be an interesting unboxing, largely because I placed this order December 30th. So I really don't remember what's in here. I know of one plant that I'm pretty excited about. It's safe to say, hopefully I'm excited about everything that's in here because that would be the only reason I would order it. What I'm remembering, there should be a mixture of some uh, succulent, type plants and some uh, moisture lovers in here. I've been trying my best, <laughs> not and not fully succeeding at it, but trying my best to only order plants or buy plants these days when I know what the intent is with that plant. Just trying to control the impulses, which I think for the most part, <laughs> I did a good job with that with this order with the exception of like one of these, just one of them is one that I'm like, eh, probably shouldn't be ordering this, but I really liked it. So I got it and the rest of everything, I'm gonna have to try and remember what I was thinking when I ordered it so I can make sure to situate them wherever it was I was thinking they were gonna go. I always like to, oh no, need to move marmalade. Plant Delights always does such a great job with their packaging. There is something unusual. I don't see that very often. There's just a loose plant down in here and I don't know how well that would have been contained. Hopefully it's not one of the really expensive ones. It's probably something dormant would be my guess. Got some planting instructions. Dear Plant Delight customer, I'm not gonna read all of this, but pre-planting tips, planting tips, container gardening, overwintering, and uh, okay, this is about the Thai giant. I will give that a read later. Interesting they provided a little care sheet full of tips on this specific plant. Makes me think that there are probably some people who have been having some issues with them, which wouldn't surprise me because they can be hit or miss sometimes. There's the invoice. Actually, I wanna wait because I wanna be surprised. I already know what two of them are. I wanna be surprised about the rest. Pull them out, set them out on the table and get them opened up. That's a fun box. Got a couple bigger ones in the back. I think I'd like to start with the smaller ones to get things going here, mostly because I'm not sure what these are. I'm getting an idea though. I'm starting to remember from seeing some of these leaves. Foliage is very telling. Cut these so I can get the tabs out. Pop those off and then these should just pull right out. Once you push those tabs back, plant shipping has come such a long way. I've been ordering from them for such a long time, since I think 2006, something like that. The vast way things have changed, but it's always been good. They've always been great at improving on what they're doing. It hasn't been drastic changes because they've always been great with how they're doing things. Look at that. Tiny little arum. Our metallicum zebra stripes. This one, it's, they're, okay, these are so small <laughs> that may not be able to appreciate them straight out of the package, right? Which means I should have prepared and been able to describe them for you as I was opening them, but I wanted to be surprised. So here it is on the screen. This is a 2023 introduction from Plant Delights. Has really long, glossy, you know, arum type foliage. Long, arrow-shaped leaves with some green, lighter green variegated marbling in there. It looks like it ruffles up some. It's a summer dormant plant, so that foliage is gonna be most abundant towards when the season starts to cool and the day lengths shorten. So fall, that's all it is. Fall is when you get to see that foliage. And then in the spring, they put up the nice aeroidy spatics, the flowers that you'll get to see in the garden before going dormant for the summertime. The next one, this is a hybrid. This is a cross from Plant Delights between Arum Italicum and the Diosporius, I believe. I have to pull it up. I should have done that first. Dioscoridus. Dioscor, I can't say it. Doesn't matter. Okay, it does matter. I'll put it up here on the screen so that you can read it. It's a cross that they made, which is fitting. The name they gave it, Love Child. Fall emerging foliage resembles air metallicum with the typical silver vein pattern on the foliage. In mid-April, when the flowers emerge, the hybrid nature becomes obvious due to the fascinating light lavender spotted spath. That will be really cool to see. They have that awesome tropical looking foliage. It's very glossy. 
Same thing as with the previous one, 12 inch long foliage. Both hardy zones 4A to 9B, I didn't, don't think I. Did I talk about the hardiness of this one? I don't think I did. Oh yeah, I remember this one. This one, I'm excited about this one. I know, that's redundant, right? Every single one of these I'm going to be excited about. Any guesses as to what this is? Might be able to tell us from looking at that planting medium. This is a Calente orchid. The variety is called Kojima Violet. It has white and pink flowers with a hint of lavender on the inside of the petals. And it just, it looks like a beautiful orchid. This is a hardy orchid. They're good zone seven and up. I'm not, I'm not in zone seven, but I have several spots in the garden that are pretty dang warm. Like, you know, I've had those Hidichium flaming torches for what, eight years? So that's a zone seven plant. I knew it was a bit of a gamble to get this one. I, I did it anyways, because the Calenthes are one of my favorite types of the different types of hardy orchids that you can grow. The Blatillas are neat, but I, I don't know. I'm just not really that crazy about a lot of them. And then there are, of course, the Lady Slippers Cypripediums, which I also love, but not as easy to grow. Not that this is necessarily a beginner's plant. This will have to be planted in a special kind of way where I'm gonna have to dig out an extra large space for it and make sure that it is filled in with a very loose, type of substrate. Something similar to what you're seeing in here, right? The Calanthes, it's not going to be as picky as the Cypripediums at all. Just really nice, loose, well-drained soil will do with these. Whereas the Cypripediums, they need to be planted almost like on the surface of the soil on something else. Not quite like that. You need to dig something out shallow for them, but in nature, you know, they grow on top of loose leaf litter and debris where those things have kind of piled and caked up to an extent, but it's not, the, the roots don't really go subterranean with the lady slippers. They have a stronger root that shouldn't be choked out unless you know, not, don't stick it in clay. That wouldn't be a good idea. So in zone seven, evergreen to semi evergreen. When I've grown Calenthes before, I rarely had an evergreen experience with them. Normally I would have to uh, put a loose pile of mulch on top of the nub right there when they would die back in the fall and i would normally cover that with a pot or something to really help insulate it and then add some more mulch on top of it that's because they're a zone seven plant and they can be more prone to rotting during the winter time when you're growing them outside of their zone only gets 10 inches tall light shade to shade this is a hybrid i'm not going to name off all these orchids i'm putting it up here on the screen for you to read okay their description of the soil way better average to slightly moist woodland soils are best that's i could have that I mean, it just wasted so much time uh, so much time average to slightly moist woodland soils think ferns something like that that would be great for these if you are in zone six there are varieties that are hardy into zone six more like 6b but i'm just not as crazy about the flowers i figured i'd give this one a shot hopefully we'll have good luck with it maybe maybe not we don't really know how hardy things are until really push the limits with them, right? So that's why I got it. I did that. This is, this is an investment for everybody. This is in the name of science. That's a stretch, right? Now I wonder what's in here. This I'm very, I have no idea. Oh, you know what? I think I, yeah, no, I know what this is. I'm, I'm going to save this for last. I just did so much talking and wasn't recording. You'd think that I had never done this before. What the crap? I opened up one of the shipper boxes and it went i'll reenact it camera was down something like this and i opened it i went oh look what a lovely plant and there was a bunch of newspaper shredding in here i took that out and threw it and then i popped the thing out so that you could pull this out they have these tabs in here that stick out from the inside to hold them in place great shipping you'll be able to see that better when i open up the next one and then i think i made some kind of inappropriate joke about taking its pants off it's a nice sized plant that was the main point that i had just discussed when I didn't hit the record button. Doesn't that look good? A little wonky, but that's the nature with elephant ears when you ship them. Same thing with bananas. They don't always ship the best. Alocasia or Leucocasia gigantea, the variety is Survivor. Zone 7B and up. That's what sets this one apart. Makes it a little bit different from the rest. I'll put what they wrote up here on the screen for everybody. They always have the best descriptions. I usually think it makes the most sense when I order from them to just read off what they have to say about the plant. Thanks to Alabama collector extraordinaire Hayes Jackson for sharing this winter hardy form of Leucocasia, formerly Colocasia, Gigantia, that we named Survivor. In rich moist soils, it easily reached eight feet tall, nine feet wide, 
Leucocasia gigantea survivor has also returned in our zone 7b garden without mulch since 1999. That's why I got this one. Resembling an alocasia, the six foot tall gray petioles stalks hold the large silver veined gray green leaves outright. When the plants mature, the tip of the leaf arches downward and each leaf develops bizarre appendages on the underside. You'll just have to see it for yourself. This clone of Leucocasia gigantea makes a fast multiplying clump, which is another fun thing about it. Looks an awful lot like a regular tie. The foliage does look like it hangs down a little bit further potentially and it might be more cupped just from looking at that picture. I'm not sure if it produces more than just the regular Thai giants do, or if that's just a description that they would say is generally true of all of the Leucocasia giganteas, because the ones I've grown in the past usually put up a good amount of suck. No, not like this though. I've never had a Thai that had offshoots coming up when they were this small. So you can see there's one here and another one coming up. So you get that tie giant effect. Foliage might be a tad smaller, but still gigantic. And winter hardy to zone 7b, but that was without mulch. Remember, they said since 1999, zone 7b without mulch. So I'm 6b and maybe with mulch, maybe, I'd, I don't know, perhaps. I guess we'll find out. I need to not be twisting and turning it so much. I just, I really, I want to show it off. But again, not the best shippers. They usually throw a fit. Well, I don't know about this one specifically, just elephant ears in general and banana trees. So I should just kind of let it chill. Soil's not at all dried out. So it might just give it a good water. I don't need to talk about the aftercare yet. Can wait till I'm done opening all of them up. Great big statement plant for the garden might be hardy with a whole bunch of mulch and when it's properly situated. And that brings me back to the care sheet that they sent. I'm gonna give this a read and report back if there's anything of importance. There are a lot of good tips in here and some things that should probably talk about, but I feel like that would be something more for a dedicated video about this plant. The main thing with the Gigantias is that they don't like wet feet. I've had them rot out on me before in spots that I thought were draining really well but clearly not because they were rotting out on me. So there are a lot of tips in here on how to prevent that, planting them in a sloped area so that moisture can run away from them. They also talk about appropriate planting time, which is just the nature for a lot of plants that are heat lovers, which this is a heat lover. So bananas, some types of gingers, canna rhizomes, alocasia, alocasia, those sorts of plants to wait to plant them until you have daytime temperatures that are warm, like the upper 70s into the 80s is where I go. They suggest the 80s right here. I also pay attention to ground temperature. I just use a compost measure, measure thermometer. Once my soil temperature is in the 70s, that's usually when I say, okay, I'm probably safe to plant them. They suggest really waiting till things are warm. So this will go hang out in the growth space until we have a warm up. It has been an unusually cool spring. Daytime temps have been in the 60s with lows in the 40s, which doesn't bother me for things I'm putting in the ground because the ground temperature right now is at 68 to 72, depending on the various spots in the garden but I will wait until things are warmer just to avoid putting the plant through any type of stress that it doesn't need to be put through. Organically rich, well-drained soil that isn't going to hold on to moisture. It needs to drain it. Well, it should hold on to some moisture, right? That, that's important, but it doesn't, not, you can't have this sitting in a puddle. That's actually verbatim what it says in here. So soaking it in a bucket when it comes to you in the mail, not a great idea. So glad I didn't do that and I read this and having it in a drainage dish that's gonna hold water, not a good idea. It needs to be lifted up so that it's not sitting in there. They also have some tips in here on what they do in winter to get them through in their climate. It says they plant them in a spot that stays dry in the winter to prevent winter rot. Smart, I definitely have to remember that. In late summer or fall, dig up the plant and replant it six inch deeper. That's a good tip for colocasias in general because they tend to move up. That's actually what it says right here. They tend to move upward in the soil over time. I think I've done a video on this, haven't I? Overwintering colocasias. I will probably do that with this one because I'm also going to want to take offshoots from it to overwinter inside. That's another reason that I found this plant appealing was not just because, okay, might be able to overwinter it. That is a bit of a long shot, but 
at the very least, I can take offshoots and put them inside in the grow space during the winter time and uh, overwinter those from the plant, hopefully, ideally. In fall, remove dead foliage, pile a mound of shredded leaves on top of the bulb for insulation. Six inches of leaves is plenty. In late spring, remove the leaves so that the ground does not stay too moist. Then when things get nice and warm, it should emerge. Probably that's one of those things that could take some time, kind of like with the mimosa trees or a lot of other tropical type rhizomes. Things have to warm up for them to get going. You see, there's a fun little leaf getting ready to open up on the inside. You see it? Can you see it? Kind of. Should be a beaut. If you're in 7B, 8A, something like that, give that a try. Let me know what's going on with it and how it does for you. The main thing out of all that that I thought was important to talk about was just avoiding the wet feet because it's so easy with an elephant here to think, oh, they need a lot of moisture. They like to have their roots submerged in some cases. People keep them in ponds and whatnot. But this is not, it's not one of those. Sit that in a spot where the soil stays wet for a really long time could have problems. So that's something I'm going to have to watch out for. It's the main issue, the main trouble I've always had with that one. Okay, hold on. There are two in here. Which one do I want to pull out first? Oh no. I'm gonna go with this end because I have no idea what this is over here. Not a clue. There's the tab I was talking about that I forgot to film before. Just push that in and then the plant will lift right out so easily if your hands aren't too big you can pull it out oh yeah i know what this is it's a waikiki hello casia waikiki one of my favorites they have really fun variegation on them this is an elephant i'll put i forgot to put you here it is on the screen waikiki is one of the variegated color casias they have beautiful foliage that opens up with a normal greenish leaf that has the white variegation that starts in the middle with a purple dot that runs through the veining and that slowly expands out to a purplish pink that starts to fill the leaf or the variegation and more as the leaf matures. I'll read their description because it's probably much better than what I just gave you. Our plants, Colocasia waikiki, mature at three and a half feet tall, five feet wide with corrugated green leaves which emerge with dark green back as the plant changes from purple to green, the leaf front develops a wide central white pattern with a purple dot. The purple overlay quickly expands over the white and then flows into the veins. By the time the leaf matures, the central pattern and veins are entirely purple. Thus, it takes about two seasons for the plant to show its mature beauty. An exquisite specimen that must be grown to be believed. White sun and moist soil are best in humid climates. Oh, and I should have read this part off too. Waikiki is the 2022 Plant Delights slash Juniper Level Botanical Garden introduction of a new John Cho hybrid that is probably the most unique and dazzling elephant ear we've grown to date. That was, I don't know why I accidentally skipped the first part. If you're gonna be reading other people's stuff, it's best to do it in full to be respectful. Aikiki, I think is a very popular elephant ear. Probably going to be seeing these around a lot more. I know several of you who live down further south have been sending me pictures of these being for sale at your Walmarts and some other big box stores, which is pretty cool. I gave them a try last year from one of those online nurseries that sends plants. It's just teeny tiny little start. It was nice, but I wanted to give one from Plant Delights a try because they don't send teeny tiny itty bitty little things, not with their colocasias anyways. Usually a good size little bulb in here to work with. Be able to get more out of the plant in a single season as opposed to with those little bitty starts. There isn't really anything to show with the foliage as you can see because well, it hasn't opened up yet. But you can tell, sort of, not really, maybe a little, that there is some variegation in here even at the smaller size. So that intense purplish pink might need to wait till the plants get a little bit larger to get to see that but you'll still get that nice white variegation on the foliage even when they're a smaller size so worth giving a try even if you're not that patient i know this says 7b just like the other one does meaning that i should probably try and see if it'll be hardy here i'm going to wait until the fall to make that decision if i'm absolutely in love with the plant then i'll probably dig it up and store it dormant just because it's pretty easy to do with the elephant ears that don't get super big ones that stay smaller as long as it produces a nice size bulb to work with. If it doesn't, not all colocasias do that, then I'll probably bury it down deeper and mulch very heavily on top of it and then have to lift it up. And talk about all that in the fall time. I don't even know if I'm going to put this in the garden. So this is one that I ordered just because I wanted it. The, actually, the last three plants are plants I ordered just because I was like, I want it. They're pretty. That's the only excuse. It's probably not going to be perennial in the garden, but we'll see. Just like with the Luco Kezia back here, I'm going to wait to put that in the ground or pot it up, whichever I decide to do 
until things warm up, which here in St. Louis, oh, well, really it should be pretty warm by now, but it isn't because that's just the nature of weather these days. In a week or two, things should be warm and more stably warm instead of what it's been doing where it's like 80 one day and then 50 the next day and then 30 the next day and then 80 the next day. By mid-May, that shouldn't be an issue. If it is, then I, 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 it's time to move. Let's open up this one. I'm excited about, I don't have to say that. I'm excited about all of them. That's why I ordered them. I only cut it with that kind of gusto because I know what's in here and I know that it's down. It's in there. I won't have cut the point. Lots of tape in there. They did a good job with all the tape. Can I get this out without getting paper shreds all over the place? Yes. Oh, good packaging. This is an agave. I cannot stand when I order an agave and there's some type of flossy material, whether that be the paper shreds or that, like, what is it? That fiber material? It's like pillow filling, polyfill, I think is what it's called. It's so hard to get out of the nooks and crannies. A lot of agaves are covered in spines so it makes it not much fun to get them out of the packaging. But this plastic bag, some paper and more paper. That was smart. Oh, it's so little and cute. Look at that variegation. That is beautiful. I'm picky about my variegation. That's really the only reason I ordered this plant was because it has a, a subtle variegation to it. A green outline on the edge of the leaves with a silvery variegation on the inside. There's just something about it that seemed like a tranquil <laughs> variegation, if that makes any sense. Agave Lonqui, which is what this one is, is a little known, amazing selection of the tropical Mexican agave potato tor potato potatipit. Never been great at saying that word. Small blue green leaves emerge with a wide gray central pattern that quickly changes to a fascinating gray striped pattern. Agave Lonqui makes a superb easy to grow container specimen where it isn't winter hardy. Mature plants should reach one foot tall by 18 inches wide. Now here's their picture of it up in the corner of the screen, one that's more mature and you can see how that variation ages out on the plant. This is, this, it's a house plant, right? Then get this one to keep outside during the winter time. There are only a few agaves that do well here in the winter time and you have to plant them in just the right spot. 12 inches tall, 18 inches wide, can have that in a pot forever well, until it flowers and then dies but still you know what i mean sun to part sun very well drained cactus succulent mix a shallow one preferably for the plant hopefully this will be one that's around for a long time need to get that potted up sooner than later this is also probably going to go hang out in the grow space for another week or two before i want to keep it out here because it just isn't warm with the spring rain and everything that it'll have to deal with and cooler temperatures at night time Probably smart to keep it inside for now. A fun plant, it, it, it's a more, it, it was expensive. That's for me to worry about, not you. If you don't want to spend that kind of money on plant, don't. I figure it's one that I'll hopefully have for a very long time. So that's how I justify, I didn't care. I went for it. I just thought the variegation was so pretty. I like that it stays smaller, so I got it. Easy agave to have around. You know, I've had a lot of the Americanas in the past, which get just way too big to keep as a house plant. Moving them around in the fall time to bring them inside is straight up dangerous. And I've had several other types that are great, but they got so big that moving them around was an absolute nightmare. I hated doing it. It's like I said, it was kind of dangerous. The spines on them get gigantic. And when you have those in a 30 inch container that weighs a lot, it's just a recipe for disaster. I would always, no matter like how thick of pants I was wearing, I would always have cuts and blood all over my legs by the time I moved them. These little guys, don't have to worry about that. There's plenty of hardier varieties that stay smaller too, but not with that neat variegation on them. The leaf blower, do I keep going or should I wait? And last but not least, I, I need to put this in the shade. So in general, chances are opening up anything mail order probably shouldn't just stick it in the sun right out of the box. Not a great idea. Now from looking at it, it's thirsty. Last one, make some room here. This one's pretty cool. Are you ready for it? I hope you're ready. Look at it, it's so freaking tiny and adorable. It had the newspaper shreds in there. I already pulled them out to make it easier to unbox for the camera. There's some more I need to get out of here. Go ahead and get the rest of those out of here. Chances are you can tell it's some sort of palm, right? This is a neat one though. Not one that's very common at all. Not one you'll be seeing very often. I don't know if they still have them for sale. I'm gonna pull up the description so I can tell you all about it. Windmill Palm Hybrid. The Trachycarpus cross for two Little wags. To let my brain put together what the two different 
plants for <laughs> the parent plants of this so that I could read that properly. It's thrilled to be able to share a rare offering of a Vic Silver Cross of Trachycarpus Fortunii Vagneranius crossed with Trachycarpus Nanus. They've named this one Trachycarpus Fortuanus Lil Wags. We don't know a mature size for these, but would estimate they would mature around 10 to 12 feet. It's a very limited, possibly once in a lifetime offer. And it's sold out. So I don't know if you'll be able to get this, but you can go on, create an account, add it to your wish list. They'll send you an email if it becomes available. There aren't any pictures of a more mature specimen of these. Aggies, the Wagneranius type trachycarpies, they tend to be much smaller. They're, they hold their leaves in closer, a really cute type of windmill palm. And then Nanus is one that also is a smaller type of the windmill palm. So putting those together, you're gonna get a cute little sweet chunky plant. I'm not going to try this one in the ground for hardiness. I don't think that'd be a great idea since it's not a plant that I'll be able to replace should we have a really bad winter. I've overwintered plenty of windmill palms before of the Fortunii types and the wags before, but this is just, it's a special one. The windmill palms, pretty easy to overwinter indoors. This will just be around as a potted plant. I, you can, I mean, even at the short size, it's already putting out the fan-shaped leaves, which you don't always see with the Fortunii's, but this is not a Fortunii, it's a Fortuanus, Fortuan, I can't, for some reason my mouth doesn't want to say that word. This one is very well established in its container too. It's already got roots coming out the bottom. So I'm ready to repot this one as soon as things warm up out here. I'm good, just gonna wait, right? May as well, it's only gonna be a couple of weeks. It'll take to a new pot a lot better if it's warmer outside. Another airplane, really? The windmill palms, they do grow a lot faster and better when you have them in the ground, but I really have become a fan of growing them potted. Now there's a dump truck. As I was saying, windmill palms, I've become a fan of growing them in containers just because it's a tropical looking plant that I can keep outside longer than any of my other tropicals, right? So when I have to move in all the Eureka palms and the Heliconias and the Bird of Paradise and just all the palms and everything goes inside in October or November, just depending on the fall, the windmill palms and the mule palms and the Fatsia japonicas the yucca recurvifolias, those are plants that I generally leave out into the teens, depending on the plant. I usually have another two or three months with some nice looking, interesting plants outside that are just something different from, you know, the pines and the hollies and the boxwoods that you typically mostly notice during the winter time here in zone six. When the forecast calls for it to be too cold, you just pick them up, move them inside. I have a few windmill palms I keep on my front porch that were only inside for I think it was one week this winter. Okay, is that better? Things have quieted down some. <laughs> the camera overheated. It's been a challenge getting this one filmed. It's been going at it for like three hours for what's probably going to be 20 to 30 minute video tops. Yeah, it's just the nature thing. Sometimes it's noisy outdoors. I got bored and went and picked out a pot for this one. I said I was going to wait a couple of weeks. I probably will. Had to get the container picked out. Picked one out for the agave. That's not what... The windmill palms, they make fine house plants. If you have to bring them inside during the winter time and keep them in a container, this will stay smaller. Going to probably be a slower grower, just judging from the nature of its parentage, but not that's not always the case. Sometimes you get some hybrid vigor, so I don't know, time will tell, but it's not going to be like some of my other windmill palms that are eventually going to outgrow being able to being able to be kept in the house. As I was saying before the camera overheated, a couple of my windmill palms were only inside for not even a week this winter. It was when that cold blast went through in late December. Otherwise they're outside on the front porch all winter long. Won't be pushing it and doing things like that with this one because you know, it's kind of valuable and precious. It's smaller, it's younger, going to be more tender, more prone to cold damage. So I'll make sure to move it inside probably when temperatures are dropping into the lower 30s this year. Next year, maybe upper 20s. It's all gonna really just depend on its growth. Both of the plants that, that make up this one, they can take a good amount of cold, but I just, I wanna grow it out and get it bigger and probably not what I'm going to want to take a lot of risks with because it's not just regular Fortunii that I can just go out and get a new one. That's all. That's what all that was about. I've added bananas to the table to get more shade because the camera was overheating. Uh, I, that's it. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you enjoyed this dumpster fire of a plant haul. Hopefully through editing it won't seem like a dumpster fire. Comment down below. Say hi. Got any fun plants? Come in the mail. Some of your favorite places to order plants from. Experiences with either one of the parents 
of this trachycarpus over here. Have you grown the hardy leukocasia, arums, all that fun stuff? Or just say hi. Love talking to everybody. Y'all are doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.